Welcome to Catalina. Catalina Island sits roughly 22 miles off the coast of Los Angeles. It is home to about 4,000 year-round residents and is visited by over a million visitors a year. Catalina is the third largest of the eight Channel Islands and is the only one that is not naval affiliated that allows year-round residents. Catalina has a unique geologic history, starting with how it formed. The Channel Islands formed after an ancient oceanic plate, the Fairlawn Plate, subducted under the North American Plate. The destruction of the Fairlawn Plate brought the Pacific Plate in contact with the North American Plate. The Pacific Plate was already moving in a different direction, northwest, not towards the North American Plate. Sliding past the North American Plate is a transformed boundary that is now known as the San Andreas Fault. During the initial sliding, a relatively small chunk called the Western Transverse Range Block rotated clockwise and swung away from the North American Plate. The four Northern Channel Islands were a part of the Western Transverse Range Block. The four Southern Channel Islands formed in the stretched area behind the rotating block called the Continental Borderlands. Catalina is geologically young and is roughly about 5 million years old. This creation is why the geology of the islands is unique. Most of the rock types found on the surface would only be found deep in the Earth's crust. To generalize, the east end of Catalina is primarily composed of intrusive igneous rocks, often referred to as Catalina Pluton. These rocks were formed from molten material cooling slowly in the Earth, which allows for crystallization. Quartz diorite is a common intrusive igneous rock on Catalina, and quartz crystals are often found in eroded areas. As you move northwest, the island is primarily composed of extrusive igneous rocks, often referred to as the volcanics. Moving further northwest still, and the island is largely composed of metamorphic rocks. One of the most famous metamorphic rocks on Catalina Island is the soapstone, named for its slippery feel when broken. From the airport and all the way to the west end, the island is mostly made of metamorphic rocks like green and blue schist. Rock types lead to soil types, which lead to plant types. All life arrived on Catalina by what is called the three W's, wind, wing, and wave. Catalina Island is home to over 60 endemic species, which are found nowhere else in the world, nine of which are endemic plant species. Catalina Island Dudleya, Dudleya virin subspecies Cassii, is a succulent. Its common name is Catalina Live Forever. Catalina Island Mountain Mahogany, Cerrocarpus traskii, is the rarest shrub in North America. It now only exists in one location on the island. The Santa Catalina Island Bush Mallow, Malacothamnus fasciculatus, variation Catalina. The Santa Catalina Ironwood, Lionothamnus floribundus, subspecies floribundus. Trasks Yerba Santa, Erotic Dian, Trasky, subspecies Trasky. The Santa Catalina Island Manzanita, Arctostaphos catalinae. The Santa Catalina Island Buckwheat, Ergonom giganteum, variation giganteum. Santa Catalina Island Bedstraw, Galium catalinus, subspecies catalinus. The Santa Catalina Island Popcorn Flower, Cryptantha catalinus. And the Santa Catalina Island Monkey Flower, Diplacus trascii, probably extinct. Catalina Island is home to over 40 rare plant species. Rankings by agencies like U.S. Fish and Wildlife, California Department of Fish and Wildlife, and the California Native Plant Nursery help conservationists prioritize rare species management on the island in their efforts to ensure that these plants don't go extinct. The Catalina Nightshade, Solanum wallacei, is currently a species of interest for the Conservancy's plant teams. They have been documenting known locations across the island. The Catalina Island Mountain Mahogany, Cercocarpus trascii, 
has only six endemic species left in one location on the island and is currently being propagated by in vitro to preserve genetics. The Catalina grass, the Xanthelium californicum. The Malva rosa, Malva azurkintia flora, which is only found on bird rock and Indian rock, two rocks not attached to the main island. The Santa Cruz Island Rockcress, Cybera filifolia, which is federally endangered. The Catalina Ironwood, Mianothamnus floribundus, subspecies floribundus, only found in a few locations on the island. The Catalina Figwort, Scrofularia pilosa. The Island Rush Rose, Procanthium greenii, federally threatened. Feltleaf Ceanothus, Ceanothus arboreus. Cliff Spurge, Euphorbia misera. Island Oak, Quercus tomentella. The Channel Island Tree Poppy, Dendromicon arfordii. And several more. Sitting at a latitude of 33 degrees north, Catalina Island is also unique in climate type. Mediterranean climates are only found in six places in the world on the western side of continents between 31 and 40 degrees north and south latitudes. Mediterranean climates are described as having hot, dry summers and mild, wet winters. Because there are long periods of drought, the plant communities have a variety of adaptations to survive. The four main plant communities on Catalina are chaparral, coastal sage scrub, riparian, and grasslands. Chaparral is characterized by hard shrubs and short woody plants and is unique to the Pacific coast of North America. Plants in the chaparral community are woody shrubs capable of growing over six feet tall. Oaks are a good example of something you would find in a chaparral plant community. Oaks have small, leathery leaves that don't wilt. A drought adaptation they have is tiny hairs on the underside to help collect water from fog and slow water loss. Their acorns drop near the base of the tree and shrubby habitat is formed. Oaks are fire adapted and are often the first chaparral species to re-sprout after a fire. The rare Catalina Island Mountain Mahogany has dark green cupped leaves with very fuzzy undersides that help collect fog and lose less water through transpiration. Ceanothus has fuzzy leaves that are felt-like for similar reasons, but one of the coolest adaptations for both felt leaf and big pod Ceanothus is that its hard seeds are germinated by fire. Areas that have periods of drought are prone to fire, so this adaptation comes in handy. A common chaparral plant on Catalina is the lemonade berry. The lemonade berry has hard, thick, waxy leaves that are wavy and help resist transpiration. The coastal sage scrub plant community is often referred to as soft chaparral. Plants in the coastal sage scrub community have lighter colored, softer leaves. These plants tend to be shorter than an adult, so typically under five feet. The endemic Catalina Live Forever is a Dudleya with light-colored, skinny leaves that are covered in a white substance that helps reflect sunlight and therefore help the plant retain water. Coastal sagebrush, nicknamed cowboy cologne, has very small, light-colored leaves that are fragrant due to oils. The light color, small leaf size, and oils all help it retain water. White sage has almost silvery leaves that help the plant to reflect some of the sunlight. The endemic Trastsura basanta is similar to the white sage in color and leaf size, which also help them to reflect sunlight. But instead of fragrant aroma like the white sage, the leaves are soft and fuzzy, minimizing water loss. You likely know that sages are fragrant, but did you know that the fragrant oils they produce act as a way for their leaves to lose less water through transpiration? The oils also act as deterrents for snacking insects and herbivores. The riparian plant community is found along any fresh waterway. Riparian plants are generally more water thirsty than those of the other Southern California plant communities. One of the most common riparian plants is bulrush. Bulrush has needle-like tips. 
Another common riparian plant is mule fat. Mule fat grows in tall stalks along stream beds and has white flowers when in bloom. Grasslands in Southern California are often called California coastal prairie. The grassland plant community on Catalina has been affected by the introduction of non-native animals. Areas that perhaps used to be more flush with native Catalina grass, which is now listed as rare, are often a mixture of monoculture and non-native grasses brought over for the animals that once inhabited Catalina in the ranching days. In certain areas, the grasslands are dotted with pretty flowers like the shooting stars, which are often an early part of the bloom year. Grasslands might also be littered with yarrow, lupin, Indian paintbrush, or even poppies. Catalina Island has a long history of disturbance to the landscape due to the introduction of non-native herbivores and plants. Introduced herbivores, such as deer, goats, and pigs, have caused significant damage to the island's ecosystems because the plants evolved without the presence of these herbivores. Therefore, they do not have the same defenses as many of their mainland counterparts and thus are more susceptible to herbivory. One of the best examples is the Catalina cherry. It has smooth, tear-shaped leaves that are larger and lack the spines of its mainland counterpart, the holly leaf cherry. In 2023, Catalina Island is still recovering from the non-native animals like the goats and the pigs, which were believed to be entirely gone by 2000. The pigs and goats were eradicated because they are rooting animals, meaning they would rip up the roots of plants. Again, since the native plants adapted without the presence of herbivores, they lack the defenses like deeper root systems. On an island that is prone to drought and therefore fire, and an island that at times gets plentiful rain, not having sufficient plant and root coverage to help anchor the soil could lead to erosion or worse, the devastating loss of precious topsoil. Although these animals have been gone for over two decades, the island is still threatened by the invasive mule deer, which were brought over for hunting. The California mule deer are property of the state of California. Therefore, local organizations like the Catalina Island Conservancy, which manages 88% of the island, cannot remove the deer. Talks with California Department of Fish and Wildlife continue to be ongoing. Deer are browsing animals, and often the island chaparral has a dystopiary or mushroom shape rather than a shrubby appearance due to the deer overgrazing the new growth. This is problematic for the plants and the animals that need that habitat. Catalina Island also has about 100 bison free roaming across the landscape. Although they can't get to as many locations as the deer and they are sterilized, there is still a potential risk to stepping on some of the rare, threatened, or endangered species like the Santa Cruz Island rockcress. As a part of conservation efforts to restore biodiversity, the Conservancy does outplantings on the landscape. Some plants have their own cage to help prevent browsing. Other areas are fenced off, called exclosures. Exclosures are often placed in areas that were affected by a fire. Burn areas have a hard time recovering because the fresh shoots get eaten before the plant can mature. The Ackerman Native Plant Nursery has a seed bank as a backup system to ensure that rare and endemic plants are not lost. Seeds are collected by the Conservancy's Seed Collection and Conservation Program and are housed in a large freezer. Seed collection primarily focuses on collecting genetically distinct seeds from multiple wild plant populations across Catalina Island. Locally sourced seeds are important so that the local genetically distinct populations are preserved. These populations are modified from their mainland counterparts and are adapted to Catalina's unique conditions, making them more likely to survive when reintroduced to the landscape. Native plants create a healthy habitat for local wildlife and are the foundation of ecosystems. Restoration efforts rely on a robust, diversified plant community. The efforts to propagate plants and then plant and cage them on the landscape is a time and costly feat. Despite efforts to restore the landscape after the removal of the non-native animals, after fires and erosion, the plants are still at risk by the introduction of non-native plant species. One of the most prominent examples of an introduced plant species taking over on the island is the flax-leaf broom, or Genisolinifolia. 
Former island owners, the Banning Brothers, planted four of these plants in front of what used to be the St. Catharines Hotel in its modern-day Descanso Beach Club. Because it is in a canyon, wind helped transport the seeds of the plants up through the canyon. It now covers the hillsides and has created a monoculture, meaning it is relatively the only plant in that area. This is a problem because not only is it taking away habitat from native and endemic species, but it's also along the main road that all tours, residents, other vehicles, and bikes take to get to and from Avalon. Because of this, the seeds are able to be transported in tires, which has not only led to it spreading more in the town of Avalon, but also runs the risk of getting transported into the interior. The problem grew to its current magnitude partially because of land ownership. The town of Avalon is owned by the city of Avalon. The canyon where Descanso is, two harbors, and other small portions of the island are owned by the island company. The Wrigley family still privately owns a small portion of land in the middle of the island called El Rancho Escondido. The remaining 88% is managed by the Catalina Island Conservancy. Because Descanso Canyon is owned by the island company, the spread of the invasive plant was not managed for decades. The seeds of the flax-leafed broom can remain active in the soil for over 50 years. The removal of these plants will take decades of time because they cannot be removed easily or quickly for fear of erosion and mudslides. The spread to the interior has already begun. Invasive species are considered the second greatest threat to biodiversity worldwide and are the leading cause of species extinctions in island ecosystems. Invasive plants also pose a threat to native plant communities as they outcompete native plants for resources like water, sunlight, and nutrients. There are now approximately 80 invasive plant species that have been identified as threats on the island. Some of the other invasive plant species found commonly across the island are tree tobacco, fennel, and mustard. Conservation crews will cut, remove, or treat these plants to slow their spread and lessen their negative impact. As of 2023, the Catalina Island Conservancy crews have mapped the entire island with GIS to identify the locations of not only invasive plants, but also some of the rare and endemic species. About 35 invasive species have been treated by the Catalina Habitat Improvement and Restoration Program to keep them from further invading the native vegetative communities. CHIRP staff explores the most remote canyons and rugged terrain on the island to gain a comprehensive understanding of the island's ecology. To inform residents of what plants they can plant for their landscape and to try to avoid another introduction of an invasive species, the conservation crews have a program called the Avalon Grasses Initiative. The crews will go around town looking at people's landscaping and will knock on doors if they see a species of concern. They will explain to the homeowner why they need to remove the plants and they will replace them with a native or endemic species. Catalina Island is about 22 miles long and about 8 miles wide. The isolation of the species on the island has led to endemism and subspecies that are unique and only exist on Catalina and nowhere else on Earth. In some cases, plants that have become genetically different from their mainland counterparts might experience island gigantism. One example of this is the Catalina Island St. Catharines lace. The flowers are larger than the mainland island buckwheat. Catalina's biodiversity is rich but fragile. With rare and endemic species, conservation efforts are important. Whether visiting for the day, exploring for a week, or moving to the island, it is important that people understand that the unique things that make Catalina so special need to be protected. Check back for more videos about Catalina.